Film Zone 3.0 There's a movie slab inside of you Well, I'm not a hill review Any movie you go give to Here comes the new Film Zone 3.0 Alrighty then Hey guys, been a long time. Sorry about that. Oh, that's good. And it feels good to be back here at the Film Zone 3.0. But at the same time, just going to be honest with you guys, because that's what I do here. I just cut the shit. I get right to it. It also feels kind of weird. Everything seems out of place these days. Nothing seems right anymore. We're living in this bizarro time right now. And the case in point is movies like Terrifier 3. The fact that they get made, the fact that we go see them, the fact that I have to talk about them, it's just proofs in the pudding, if you know what I'm saying. But all that aside, still feels good to be back here at the Film Zone 3.0. And I'm working on some amazing stuff. It's been a while. It's been a long time. Sorry. But I got the Welcome Math and Shin Show. I'm working on about to drop that. It's going to blow your minds. It's a whole new concept. We're talking about movies and stuff on YouTube. Neckbeard, fat-ass losers that look like me, they're not going to be ready for this. I promise you. No one's going to be ready for the Welcome Matheson Show. And the second wave of official Movie Slob merch has just dropped on the website, movieslob.com. Just click on the thing that says merch or whatever and get a shirt and a cup or whatever things. Pretty good. I designed them myself. Let's talk about this Terrifier 3 thing. Okay, because we're actually going to talk about this. I'm going to break down. I'm going to give you all my points, my five points, why it's bad. And I'm going to break down exactly why it's the worst horror movie of the year, okay? And this is not coming from some fake, fat-ass loser horror movie nerd guy. I mean, there ain't no fakeness about this. I've been watching these things since I was a little kid. I got the VHSs. I got all this. I just I got Terrifier. I got Chopping Mall. I, I got millions of dollars, probably, worth of VHS crap that I've been collecting for a long time. It's just collecting dust, and it's eventually going to be in a fucking landfill. And at the end of the day, Terrifier 3 is not really a horror movie in so much as it's a <coughs> tragedy about the fall of movies and people and cinema and America and appreciation and all that good stuff. There's a bigger picture problem sort of thing with clowns and stuff, and I'm going to get into it for real. Terrifier 3, okay? I hate to break this to you guys or the people that made this movie, but the clowns aren't scary anymore. That officially died in 2017 when they made that piece of shit It Clown remake thing. It doesn't matter how gory you make the movie and chopping up little kids and stuff. We've all, we've seen it all. Especially kids these days. They're not afraid of horror movies anymore. So basically, horror movies used to be made for little kids, for teenagers. That's who the target audience was, right? And now, little kids aren't afraid of that sort of thing. They're not afraid of the boogeyman and stuff like that. The only thing they care about is their phones and, I guess, getting shot in the face at school. Like, they're scared of that, I guess, a little bit. So horror movies is the sad state of affairs where they're just made for old, fat-ass losers that look like me. That's just the reality. So the target demographic for this shit has shifted from little dumb kids to retarded, old, fat, neckbeard losers. And when you have that much distance, that much detachment from the material and the reality of it, it that's it's going to create movies like this, Terrifier 3. All this stuff, it's not even movies anymore. They're just products trying to fill this void. I mean, my whole house, everything I own is trying to fill some void in my soul, some emptiness with VHSs, horror movies that no one ever even really liked. Little kids don't know what clowns are. Like, they don't have any frame of reference for the world of movie stuff that we live in anymore. It's all irrelevant. You know what I mean? So maybe we should just start making CGI, Mario, Roblox stuff. Because they have no idea what any of this shit's about. But I'm talking about broken promises and the bizarro world that we're living in now. You see, you guys don't understand, right? You guys don't know about racism like I do. I saw it harder and deeper than other people did. Even blacks that I grew up with here in Mississippi. The black people, they got racism when they were out and about. When they left their house. When they went into public. When they tried to do white people things and stuff. So that they only caught racism like half the time. Because the other half the time they're in their houses hiding. And I was a victim of racism more than them because I caught it 100% of the time. I saw it and felt it at all times because it was in my house and everywhere that I went. You see what I mean? So people don't really know that, about that racism stuff like I do. And the whole bizarro fucking broken promises thing is that I was raised, my dad, his grandpa, my uncle, they were all in the clan, the Ku Klux Klan. And I was raised promised that there was going to be a civil war a second civil war between the blacks and the whites it was coming my whole life my whole life people have been telling me that this war was coming it just never happened never came there was no war so 
They're full of shit. And now the same people that have been lying to me for 40 years about how this war was coming. Now they're saying another one's coming, but it's going to be a little different. And speaking of bizarro world... This new civil war, I can't even wrap my mind around it. It's not the whites versus the blacks. Now they're saying the civil war is going to be retarded people versus slightly less retarded people. I don't, I don't know what planet I'm living on anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. They made a movie out of this last year called Civil War. Did you see that? I saw about 20 minutes of it. Then I walked out because it was fucking horrible. And I got a text message on my phone saying that the pimento cheese spicy chicken sandwich is back at Chick-fil-A. So I got the fuck out of there. And just between you and me, personally, this is my personal opinion. Okay, well, what do I know? I've only seen 40,000 movies. I've got 10,000 in my house right now. My personal opinion is the only thing worse than a shitty horror movie is a shitty Christmas horror movie. Because Christmas ruins everything. You guys want to hear a little good news, bad news before I get even deeper. We're, we're going we're going hard on this Terrifier 3 bullshit movie thing. Is My mom got me a little early Christmas present, which is Baby Dick Condoms. I don't know if you can see them here. I don't know where she got them from. She must have ordered them on the internet things or something. But that's the good news. Even though my dick's broken, it doesn't matter anyway. I'm supposed to get ready for this because she knows Halloween's my favorite time of the year because of all the hot little girls and foods and stuff. She was thinking, you know, like a good mom, that maybe my little baby dick will get unbroken or whatever. And I'll, I gotta be ready. I gotta have a little baby dick condom for when I see my princess. I don't get her pregnant right away until we can both have a job and uh, security in a house and stuff to raise our little baby in, stuff like that. But the thing is, the bad news is these things are so tight that I've tried to practice with my little Vienna sausages. Anytime I get even close to getting it on, it literally cuts the Vienna sausage dick right in half. That's how tight they are. So when I go out there and the magic happens, I'm just going to have to wing it. Here's a little thing people don't talk about, especially guys. It's a little locker room talk. When you're super fat, but it's not your fault, and you got big jeans and big bones and big problems like that, it makes it gives off the appearance that you're unhealthy. Even doctors think. They run your numbers and tests and things, and they think you're unhealthy. Even though I'm super healthy and I eat really good and I diet and exercise and all that stuff. And that sort of fake unhealthiness trickles down to your little baby dick. And even back then when I could get hard, a decade or so ago, I could only, my window of opportunity was only a few seconds. Just blink and it's gone. It just goes back to being smaller than this. So even if I was healthier, right, I don't know if I could overcome the psychological damage that's been done of the last 30 years of thinking I was unhealthy because I was big jean, big boned, and having all this extra fat on me, which stopped me from getting long hard-ons. Can't over overcome that. So even if, let's say, hypothetically, my Star Wars diet does work, I lose all this weight, I get in super shape, and I'm ripped like Tiger Woods or LeBron James or something, I don't think I'll be able to get over the psychological damage done to my baby dick. And there's definitely not going to be enough time for me to put on that little baby condom on my little dick, so it's just all pointless. So long story short, I'm not going to be able to practice safe sex. I just got to find my princess who will be willing to wait patiently for me uh, to be able to get hard one day. And it'll be like the princess and the frog thing, kissing the frog and turning them into a prince. And then when I get hard, I'll just have to bust a nut inside of her. Tell you something about Terrifier 3 and why I fucking hated this movie so much. <laughs> right before we went and saw it, me and my mom stopped at the Walmart. We're gonna get some we're gonna load up on Halloween candies. And we get in there and this is this is the first time this has happened in a long time. You know, I had to wheel my fat ass mom in there. And I was trying to get her one of those uh go-kart things, automated cart things for fat people. And I usually get one too. I've been riding dirty lately. But if I see a really fat person or someone that's crippled or whatever, I'll get up, believe it or not, and let them have the automatic one and I'll I'll use the normal cripple wheelchair the one you have to physically move the arm even though my doctor said that's dangerous and i might exert myself too much i've been having breathing problems all this stuff long story short we go to walmart put my fat ass mom in she gets one of the automatic go-kart things they only had one though so the only other option was a regular crippled retarded wheelchair which i got into unfortunately though the night before i stayed up all night with my brother playing guitar hero so my arms were really weak 
my mom, she's just blasting ahead of me, like rubbing it in my face, literally making me eat dust while I look like fucking born on the 4th of July, crippled Vietnam vet trying to keep up behind her. So we finally got to the Halloween candy aisle. And this is where sometimes, you know, living the lifestyle of nostalgia and memories and thinking about good times and stuff back then when things were better for us, it's sometimes dangerous. And this is sometimes I see stuff that triggers me. Not just my PTSD from those stairs at the mall, but I got this other PTSD thing that my doctor's been talking about where like nostalgia and memories trigger me. Stuff like cartoons and stuff from kid kidhood and candies and certain foods and things trigger me to this time where I wasn't a crippled fat loser in a wheelchair and I thought and I was so happy because I could thought I was going to grow up to be important or something. But I get triggered by all this stuff and it just reminds me how much of a loser I am. And case in point, we're in the Walmart and I'm... We're, we're turning down the candy aisle, and I see these three little fat kids, and they were lined up in a row. And I'm not joking. This is a 100% true story. They looked like they were triplets, like three little twins. And they were there with their mom, and she was just busted and angry and tired and beaten. And you could tell her clothes were real old and worn. She had giant sacks under her eyes. She was miserable. She was hunched over the cart, and she had a pen and paper, and she was she's one of those people that still makes a physical list on paper with a pen, and she was trying to figure out what they had left to pick up and things they needed for groceries and stuff, and her little three kids were standing looking at the Halloween costumes. And this is what kind of triggered me because you guys don't know this, but I've never been able to celebrate Halloween like everyone else because I've always been so fat. I could never wear the cool costumes that they sold at the Kmart or the, uh, the Walgreens. Because even now, they're making some cool stuff. They got inflatable things, all kinds of cool costumes for kids and stuff. No one knows the pain of not being able to celebrate Halloween more than fat kids. And I saw these three little kids. They're fat-ass little tubs of shit standing there lined up. They literally look like three bowling balls with feet. I've never seen human beings so spherical in my life. You guys do think I'm lying. I should have took a picture of it. They, they didn't even look real. They look like three perfectly round butter balls i should have took a picture you wouldn't believe it and they were just sta- they were standing in place their little fat bodies and they were all just looked like this and they all had sodas and chips in each hand and they were eating and they were just staring like this at the costumes all three of them like that and they couldn't breathe and they had you can't see because of my beard but they, they all had double chins and tits, and they were perfectly round, and they were just sitting there, stuffing their faces, and eating, and just sad, just looking at the costumes, and dreaming about the things they wish they could be, and that really hit home, struck a chord with me, it was the saddest thing I'd ever seen, because those kids are fucked, you know what I mean, they're, they are fucked. And I don't care what anybody says, nobody knows that pain of being that little fat kid who can't, you can't even dream of being something because you're on a day-to-day basis you are face to face with the reality in the mirror or at the walmart or being bullied by your fellow classmates that you are worthless that you are a fat bowling ball perfectly spherical tub of shit that will never amount to anything and these costumes in front of you none of them will fit your fat disgusting ass so these little kids all of them are just sitting there eating Staring at the costumes and looking at the pictures on the costumes of these perfect, little, beautiful, skinny children having the times of their life. And it's not even these little fat kids' fault. Sometimes it is. Some, some, some kids are just greedy. They eat too much. Period. They're lazy. You know what I mean? I saw in those kids what I saw in me, what I see in me and saw when I you know, used to see myself and stuff and think about me when I was younger. I saw me in them. And I saw the big jeans, the big bones, and the parents... That forced them and me to eat the way that I do and to become the way that I am. It just just broke my heart. I was standing there shocked looking at this, thinking about all these experienced things, and it hit my PTSD. And I went to tell my mom. It's like I'm having some kind of PTSD attack panic thing. I need my medicine. She said, sorry, baby, I don't have your medicine. And I said, well, get me some fucking M&M's quick. And she went to the M&M's, the little Halloween M&M's. She broke open a big bag of them, and I started stuffing my face, thinking about all this trauma stuff and PTSD things and fat kids and stuff. And it just, you never know. Life is cruel a lot of times, all the time when you're fat, when you're a fat-ass loser. And that hurt. And then, you won't believe this, I'm coming back down from the, the M&M's. 
And this fucking soccer mom comes flying down the, the aisle. She's chasing after her kid, and he looks like Dennis the Menace. Like, for real. Like a little blonde kid, and he's just running up and down the aisle, taking things off the shelf and breaking them on the ground, and, and laughing like a fucking goblin. And he's throwing stuff in the air, and all I hear is the mom running behind him. It really happened today. The mom's running behind him going, Maverick! 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 And like a half-hearted, like she wasn't really mad she was like excited it was really bizarre and she was she was she kept screaming his name which was maverick and then this kid's like two or three like a little brat she she came and stopped next to us like half out of breath screaming down the aisle maverick get back here you little devil like that screaming maverick and she stopped and looked at us and she's like what am i gonna do with that maverick And right then, this is this has not happened in a long time to me. I'm, I'm dealing with all this PTSD stuff, all these emotions and nostalgia things and crap hitting me. And M and M's, they weren't that good. I wish she would open that, you know, the peanut ones. She got the regular. That's okay. But I'm dealing with all this stuff, and I look up at this woman, this beautiful, perfect blonde woman, young, obviously has money, her little Aryan blonde devil child running down the aisles the look on her face which was something like out of a horror movie to me you know this is my personal opinion the way i see things all of that and then i panned over and looked at the other family the mom hanging on for dear life to the basket trying to make ends of her sandwich meat things end and stuff and her fat kids standing there basically in a puddle of tears and mountain dew looking at these costumes they'll never be able to fit in when i saw all this and especially this fucking woman looking at me with this horror movie smile as she shouted for her son maverick i got this feeling that i haven't had in a long time and i'm not proud of it and i don't condone it but for the first time in a long time, I actually thought about killing this woman, a person. Everyone thinks about killing people, but this one I was very close to doing it. I was thinking about her harder than I had in a long time. I was standing there thinking about choking this woman to death with my bare hands just so I could wipe that look off of her face. And I wanted to do it in front of her son, Maverick. I wanted him to watch, and I wanted him to never forget it. This is what was playing out in my mind. And deep down, I just wanted that poor fat woman with the fat kids to be proud of me. But the problem is, you know, there's not that many fat characters that fat people can play in Halloween times. You know, you think there are, there really aren't. Especially, like, Halloween's about horror and stuff. There's just not that many fat guys. There's, like, Leatherface. There's, like, Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. There, there's not much you can do. You can be Slimer, I guess. That's a stretch. There's not many possibilities when you're fat right because we have no representation okay and i'm so sick of like no offense to like you know coloreds and asians and all that stuff they've been bitching for years about no representation in movies that's great i'm so happy for them they finally got their everything all at once and they got their black panther movie and they're getting all this representation but what do fat people get fat people get nothing we get no representation. The only thing we get is Mike and Molly, fat ass losers in some sitcom where they're the butt of every joke. That's the reason fat kids don't have any idols or things to want to dress up as. How many times can I dress up as John Candy for Halloween? You see what I'm saying? It gets old. There's no representation in movies, right? Like Woody Allen, he makes movies about Jews in New York City. And Spike Lee makes movies about black people in new york or whatever some city but the jewy and the blacky stuff is the backdrop it's the flavor of the movie they're actually about like dramas and comedies and romances all these things have stuff happening in them aside from the people being jewish or black or whatever so where is our equivalent where is our fat spike lee or fat woody allen there's no one just making movies about fat people. And I think I'm on to something here. And I'm not talking about this fake fat pride thing, dancing in the street, singing about how great it is to be a fucking hog. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about normal fat people struggling. Where's our rom-coms? Where's our comic book movies? You know what I mean? We need some representation in film. And give these little fat ass tubs of shit kids a chance to want to be something better than what they are. What was I talking about? Terrifier 3.
horrible, horrible killer clown movie. And the horrible reality is Terrifier 3 is just a byproduct of the times we're living in. It's all nostalgia, cash grab, fake bullshit stuff. And there's this huge gap, generational gap in understanding and references and things. We don't even know what we're doing anymore. They're making fucking Frankenstein type movies now. So if you think the kids are confused about sexuality and all this sort of thing, you should watch a movie with them. Those are just as confusing. It's all builds to Terrifier 3 and what I've been talking talking about watching terrifier three is just like being in real life you know what i mean there is no escapism anymore my brother asked me why they don't make movies like the naked gun anymore it's because real life is the naked gun you know what i mean we are living in the upside down stranger thing times there's an uneasiness now about the world and my perception of it everything feels off everything feels wrong but after seeing Terrifier 3, I had this epiphany thing that dawned on me, which is everything is supposed to feel wrong. Because if it didn't feel wrong, we'd all want to live forever like some fucking stupid vampire assholes. Each year, the uneasiness of life grows stronger and stronger in all of us, especially as old people. And that's because death is right around the corner for a lot of us. And this uneasiness that we're feeling is God's way of ushering us in to the next chapter. It's really hard for a lot of old people like me and fat ass loser neckbeards that look like me to understand that life changes. Life moves on without our say. It doesn't matter how hard you tweet or how much crap you buy to try to fill this void. Life keeps moving and there's like a beauty in understanding that. It sucks for us because we are us. That doesn't give us the right to reign on the parades of little retarded kids. They can never understand what we've been through, and we can never understand what they're going through. We live in two different realms. The generational differences between us and them is as complex as the differences between fish and humans. But I don't walk around trying to pick the brains and figure out what fish think. Because that's fucking retarded. So we should just leave these little fish alone. I'm, I'm just as guilty as the next guy of, you know, preaching the same bullshit most of my life. You know, things were better back when we had video stores and Blockbuster. And I know it wasn't. It was better for us because that was us. It's nonsensical to think that, that things that affect us could affect them the same way. It's just not a thing let these little kids zombie out on their cell phones and on their tiktok and all that crap and let them watch their terrible horrible soulless pointless fucking void of a movie that is terrifier 3 if you like killer clowns that are probably from outer space go watch that movie what kids these days like that's their journey and sadly ours is coming to an end my history is as shallow as the grave I'm going to be buried in. My history is as pointless as the VHS movies I hoard. Just think about this. The absurdity of my reality in that I know more about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles than I do any historical figures. People that did real awesome shit and like affected the world. I know more about Jason Voorhees than I do my own mother. I am trash and my generation is trash knowing that is half the battle and i see you death i see you hiding in all this uneasiness i see you and i'm ready i'm ready for you to come and take me because i'm not scared anymore i'm not afraid take out the papers and the trash